Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going over starting out as a new player in Mortal Online 2 with a focus on getting out of the Haven starting zone as quickly as possible while teaching you some of the basics. I made a similar video to this a while ago but the starting zone has been updated quite a few times and the new player experience is pretty different to how it used to be. So think of this as an updated guide going over the basics and helping you get off to a good start. Keep in mind I haven't played Mortal Online 2 for a long time and have just come back to it so I'm kind of new to it again and this guide won't be perfect but I thought that I'd try to help other new players out there along the way while I relearn everything and there'll be more guides to come soon. Let's get started. In this video we're going to be creating a foot archer which has less strength than others but high speed and dexterity making it great for running down enemies or getting away as well as attacking from a distance with a bow. Alvarins are the best race for this kind of playstyle due to their high dexterity and clade gifts, which are like talents. They're the fastest race and the most agile, meaning you can run, jump, swim and ride a horse a lot more effectively than other races, but they aren't quite as strong or as tanky as them. We're gonna go with a pure Vila, which is the fastest bloodline type and make the character stout, increasing its health and damage at the expense of a small amount of dexterity or speed. Once you pick a name and create your character, log into the world and you'll arrive on Haven, an instanced zone with no PvP for new players. You'll first see a tutorial window pop up. I highly recommend going through the full tutorial, but if you don't want to go through it, this video will cover most of the basics anyway, with the aim of getting you out into the big open world soon enough. Tap R to close the tutorial window and then take a quick look around and open your character window by tapping C. You'll see your character's name, stats and equipment from here and can drag your sword to a key binding of your choice on the right hand side. When you tap the key binding, like the number 1 here, you'll equip or unequip the weapon. Tapping I will open your inventory, where you'll see everything you have inside. Next, tap L to bring up the skills window and drag the resting skill onto another keybind slot. These are the only two key bindings you'll need for now. Go ahead and close each window and tap X to take out your sword and then X again to put it away. Now we're going to speak to a few NPCs that will teach you some skills and save you a lot of time going forward. This is new and these tutor NPCs weren't always available. Talk to each one by facing them and then holding R and then ask each of them to teach you about the skills that they offer and you'll instantly learn many of the basic skills that you'll need for later on. Keep going until you've spoken to every tutor and learned all the skills that you can see here and then you'll be ready to head out to the graveyard, about a 2 minute walk away where you'll learn to fight and make some gold. Follow the path out of the city and hold shift while running to sprint and go even faster. When you sprint with your weapon drawn, you'll go faster than without your weapon drawn. And when running normally without sprinting, you'll be faster without your weapon drawn. You'll notice the yellow stamina bar at the top left of the screen run out as you continue to sprint and once that runs out, you'll want to activate your resting ability by tapping the keybind you linked it to on your action bar, like 5 in my case. Running without sprinting will replenish your energy or stamina quite slowly, while standing will regenerate it a lot faster, but resting will regenerate it the fastest, along with your health, and it's a skill that you can level up and improve over time. When your stamina bar is nearly full again, take out your weapon and keep sprinting. You'll soon arrive at the graveyard. Here you'll want to focus on killing a ton of zombies. Run up to a zombie and left click to attack them. Holding down the left click longer will make your attack stronger up to a point, while just tapping the left click button will swing quickly but do barely any damage. Go for heavy hits by charging up each attack and releasing the left click once the small circle around your crosshair is full. You can attack and defend in different directions by moving your mouse slightly up, down, left or right before clicking. To block attacks, just right click instead of left clicking and you'll easily be able to block attacks coming from any direction. It takes a little getting used to but with practice you'll become a lot better at both attacking and blocking in no time. And killing zombies is the best place to start as you can easily identify which direction they'll be attacking from after every hit. After killing a zombie, you'll see a brown bag drop on the floor right where it died. Look at it and hold R to open it, and then look at that loot. You'll see a zombie head and a carcass, sometimes money or armor pieces too. Loot the head and the carcass by just right clicking on them, and then tap I to open up your inventory. 
you'll see that each zombie head is worth around 10 silver and weighs only 2.3 kilos, but the zombie carcass weighs a lot more and has no value. You'll want to right click on that and then hold the butcher button in the window that pops up to process it into materials that can actually be used or sold. This will reduce the weight and give you bone tissue and sometimes other materials too. You'll see bone tissue weighs quite a lot too and doesn't have much value compared to zombie heads, but it can be used to craft basic armor and weapons. For now, you'll want to kill some more zombies and collect some more heads to sell it all and make some gold while leveling your skills and practicing how to attack and block. Once you've got around 12 heads or so, come outside the graveyard and speak to the NPC vendor just opposite. Right click the heads and bone tissue you'd like to sell, then tap accept at the bottom right hand side of the trade window. You'll get around 1 gold and 20 silver and can now upgrade your sword. Look for the steel straight blade being sold by the same vendor and then tap C to open up your character window. Take a look at the stats of your current weapon and of the sword that the vendor is selling and you'll see that the damage of the vendor sold sword is quite a bit higher. Your starting sword hits for 5 with overhead attacks like when you attack with an upwards direction, 6 with stabbing attacks like when you attack with a downwards direction and 8 when attacking from the left or the right but the new one hits for 5, 9 and 12, respectively, a lot more when attacking from the side, which is what you'll mainly be doing with a sword of this type anyway. Click on the sword you'd like to buy and then tap accept to trade 20 silver for it. Now that it's in your inventory, close the vendor window and drag the new weapon up to the same action bar slot you used for your starter sword to replace it. Tap the relevant key to equip it and you'll now have your new higher damage sword on you. Your starter sword will go back into your inventory. Tap X again to bring it out and now go kill some more zombies. You'll need all the practice you can get as later you're gonna go and kill bandits which are a lot harder. They're still pretty easy to kill on Haven but once you leave bandits are a lot stronger and will kill you easily if you don't learn how to block well. If you're lucky you'll run into a zombie boss which is bigger than the others and has more HP. They drop more loot and can be good practice to fight plus they give you a lot more XP for killing them. Once you have around 3 gold, you'll want to head a bit further past the graveyard to an area with a lot of pigs. You're gonna want to kill them and, just like before with the zombies, loot their carcasses, then right click and butcher them. You'll end up getting a few different materials you'll be using soon to craft your own gear. You'll notice when you pick up too much stuff, especially like heavy carcasses, you'll be moving slower or not be able to move at all. This is due to the weight limit that you have and can see at the top of your inventory window when tapping I. The stronger your character is, the more weight you'll be able to carry before getting slowed down. If you're slightly over your weight limit, your speed won't be reduced by much, but once you get too far past the limit, you won't be able to move at all, which will make you a sitting duck out in the open. It's good to be aware of this and not loot too much in one go. Once you've slaughtered a few pigs and their families and butchered them, you should have a mix of bone tissue, leather, something called emalge and tallow. All you'll need to do for now is keep the leather and emalge. So you can throw the rest away by just dragging each material out of your inventory then confirming that you'd like to destroy it. Now it's time to head back to the city and make some gear for yourself. Head back remembering to sprint with your weapon out to go faster and rest when you're out of stamina to regenerate it more quickly and once you're in town head right to the armor crafting table. Look at it and tap R to open the crafting window then tap on head armor and Caladian padded helm to select it as the item you want to craft. Drag the leather in your inventory to the core material and padding material slots. Then drag both sliders under them to the right to get them to 100%, making you use up more material for better quality gear. And then left click the hold to craft button while holding it down until you've made one. Do the same for all the other armor pieces and you'll then have a full set of quality leather gear crafted by yourself. Close the crafting window and open your character window by tapping C. Then right click on each piece of gear in your inventory to see your character put it all on and transform from a naked nobody to a scary looking badass. Well, kind of. Once you equip everything, you'll notice a debuff right under your character's stats in the top left corner. This debuff is there to let you know that you're wearing armor that's heavier than you can naturally carry, so you'll be slower. But as you continue using the armor, your armor wearing skill will increase meaning you'll be able to wear it without any negative effects very soon. You can see the total armor weight your character can carry on the character window itself on the statistics tab. Heavier armor requires a higher skill level at wearing heavy armor. For now you don't need to care about any of that though. Just keep the gear you're using equipped and that debuff will soon disappear as your stats increase. 
Now we're gonna head to the library on the other side of town. The library is where you'll find tons of different books you can buy and use to learn different skills, from combat skills to crafting skills and everything in between. This part of the guide is optional, but if you follow it, it'll set you up pretty well for being self-sufficient when it comes to using bows. As this character is an Alvarin Vila, you'll want to be able to use good quality bows, and making them yourself is easy. Just head to the crafting librarian inside the library and buy the bow crafting composite bow and bow crafting recurve bow books. These two books will enable you to craft pretty good bows that are very effective in PvP and PvE easily without needing to buy them from other players, helping you be self-sufficient, at least when it comes to one type of weapon. Right click the bow crafting composite bows book first to begin learning it and then tap C to open your character window. You'll see that the book is now showing up there on the bottom right with 262 hours remaining. Don't worry though, it won't take you that long to learn what you need to in order to make great bows. The next book can only start being learned once your newly learned skill, Composite Bow Composition, is level 50. Now let's head back to the center of town to pick up a few more things before we continue. First, head to the weapon vendor to buy a bow for one gold. Next, head to the utility vendor and buy around 100 broadhead arrows. Bodkin arrows generally aren't good to use at all, broadhead arrows are good for short and medium ranged bows and longbow arrows are only good for longbows. Buy around 30 bandages too. These can be used to heal you and are really useful in general. Now open your inventory by tapping I, then drag your bandages to another action bar slot. When you tap the relevant keybind you'll start bandaging yourself right away. This takes about 10 seconds to do and you'll heal yourself for a random amount shortly after. You won't be able to use your bandages again for 5 to 10 seconds, but there's no indicator to show this cooldown itself. Next, drag the bow in your inventory to an action bar slot of your choice, and just like with your sword, you'll now be able to equip and unequip it by just tapping the relevant keybind. You can swap between your sword and your bow easily this way, but remember, you'll always need to tap X to actually take out either weapon once you've equipped it. Right click on the arrows in your inventory to add it to your quiver or ammo slot, which you can see on the bottom left of your character window. You'll need to right click them in your inventory again to bring the ammo count back up to the max of 25 whenever it's lower than that, but you can also drag the arrow stack from your inventory to an action bar slot and then use the relevant keybind to do it. Once you take out your bow, just aim and left click to fire. As with using a melee weapon, holding the left click will charge up the attack, so you'll want to do that first in most cases to make your arrows go further and hit harder. Now it's time to head back to the graveyard and kill a bunch more zombies before we head to the bandits and then get out of Haven. Before leaving the starter island of Haven, you'll need to level up your clade gifts, which are like talents, to level 2. Zombies don't give much clade gifts XP, at just 2 per zombie, but there are many of them and they're quick and easy to kill. Bandits, which you'll go to kill soon, give 16 XP, which is a lot more, but are harder to kill and there are way fewer of them. If you don't want to be stuck around waiting for bandits to respawn after you kill a few, and want to get out of Haven as quickly as possible, killing zombies up until you're around halfway to level 2 is the best option. Once you get to Clade Gifts level 1, you'll hear a sound and see a notification in the middle of your screen, letting you know that you leveled it up. Tap C to take a look at your Clade Gifts and feel free to look through all the available ones. Depending on what you want to do early on, you can choose the right path for you, but you can't really go wrong with either the Stalker or Long Life Clade Gift trees starting out. Pick the one you'd like, then continue. Kill the zombies as quickly as you can, or take your time and practice attacking and blocking while doing so, and don't worry about looting all of them. 10 or so zombie heads should be enough. Tap C and navigate to the Clades Gift tab every now and then to see your progress and once you're about halfway to level 2, go to the vendor just outside to sell the zombie heads and then head back to the city. At this point, you're almost done with Haven. Run all the way through the city to the other side where there's another entrance and keep following the path across the bridge. You'll want to follow the river all the way down to the bandit camp to get the rest of the Clades Gift XP that you need and then down to the fishing village to finally leave Haven. It takes a while to get there, but once you leave Haven, you'll be able to actually get a horse, which will make getting around far more enjoyable. Once you reach the bandits, try to kill them one by one. It's possible to kill two or three at a time, but it can be pretty difficult. If you think that you might die at all or are overwhelmed, just simply run away far enough and they'll stop chasing you. Then you can bandage up and rest and go back to fight them again when you're ready. Once you kill a few and get to Clade Gifts level 2, continue heading down the path along the river until you get to the fishing village. Once here, sell your loot from the bandits at the nearest vendor, and then head to the two statues by the tree just outside. 
One statue allows you to travel to a different Haven instance, so you can meet up with a friend for example, and the other allows you to travel to Merland, the main world where you'll be able to kill or be killed by other players, get a horse, and begin truly playing the game. Go up to the statue and hold R, then think about where you'd like your starting city to be. Fabenum is a good choice and is the area Haven is based on, so it will look very similar. Tindrum is a good choice too, with a protected graveyard and a dungeon nearby. Maduli is also a pretty good option, with a protected graveyard near the water, but there are other cities that you could start out in too, and you might want to look into the different cities online before you pick a zone. Either way, you'll always be able to travel between cities, so if you're unhappy with the one you pick, you won't be stuck there forever. In this video, I've picked the default starting city, which is Fabenum. Once you've picked the city you want to travel to, place your skill book in the window by right-clicking it or dragging it into the window, as well as some image and as much gold and silver as you can, so that the total value of gold and items you bring over is just within the limit of 3 gold. Once you've done that, click and hold the travel to whatever city you picked button and then keep holding it down until you've logged out. Sometimes the game crashes after this, but all you need to do now is log in again, select your character and enter the world. Now, if you also picked Fabenum, you'll find yourself in the same city you were in on Haven, but now you're in the real world with more players and anyone can attack you anywhere you are. Tap C to see your character window and you'll notice all your equipped gear is still there. Tap I to open your inventory and you'll notice almost nothing is. But don't worry, everything you brought with you, including the gold, will be in the bank. Now you can attack or be attacked by anyone, even if you're in a city. But the cities have guards who will protect players within and around them, and they're really strong. So you generally won't be attacked unless you head a bit too far outside the city. You're gonna need to head to the graveyard now, just to kill a few more zombies and get some more money and bone tissue. But keep an eye out for any players who might want to kill you or attack you. If you get hit, start running back and zigzag along the way. The graveyard here isn't protected by any guards. If you successfully make it back, sell the zombie heads you got and head to the bow crafting table with the bone tissue you have. Open the crafting window, then tap on decurve bow, short bow, then composite in the material setup section. From there, drag the bone tissue from your inventory into the base and secondary material slots in the crafting window and leave the material balance at 50%. Now you can left click the hold to craft button. Press L to navigate to the composite bow composition skill in the profession skill tab at the top and move the window around as you'd like so that you can see the skills progress as you continue to craft. Now we're going to make a lot of low quality bows using the bone tissue you got to level up your composite bow composition skill. Once this gets to level 50, you can throw away the book that your character is currently learning and right click the other one in your bank to learn the recurve bow skill instantly which will then allow you to make great bows that are really effective in both PvP and PvE, and you'll be one step closer to being self-sufficient. As you craft all the bows, you'll see your inventory getting full. Just hold Alt and right-click each bow one by one to select them all, then confirm you'd like to destroy them and repeat the process of crafting a ton of them again. If you run out of bone tissue, head to the bank and take out all your gold, then head to the market broker and search for bone tissue. You should be able to find some that you can afford, but if you can't, you may need to go back to killing a few more zombies for gold or bone tissue alone. If you can afford it, buy some and head back to the crafting table to keep making bows. It takes a while, but keep doing this until your skill gets to level 50, and then open up your character window by tapping C, and left or right click the book you're currently learning to stop learning it. It should disappear. Now right click on the new book in your inventory, and you'll instantly learn the new recurve bow mechanic skill that you need to make awesome bows. Now head back to the crafting window and you'll see that you're able to make a new type of bow, a recurve bow. Select that and then composite again and drag the amalge that you have into both material slots and craft a few bows. You'll notice that the stats on each bow are slightly better than the last as your skill level increases with each bow crafted. Now you have a bow in any case and should be able to equip it. If you find that you can equip it but you can't actually pull it to aim and shoot, Check your strength level and the bow's strength requirement. You might need to level your strength up a bit more, but that shouldn't take too long and will come naturally. From here, what you do and where you go is up to you, but a good idea would be to start saving up some gold to buy a horse and some bags for it. It will make killing and looting zombies or even animals out in the open a lot more efficient and profitable. I hope this video helps some of you out there for now anyway, and I'll be making more guides soon, so if you enjoyed it or it helped you out at all, please leave a like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.